Carol Atoma. 4 0. Happy with that? Um, I'm one of the critical people. Um, I'm always going to like, you know, criticize myself and look at things I could have done better. But I'm blessed and grateful to have got the opportunity to be in here, Cobble Box Arena, Stratford. Beautiful arena, um, you know, crowd coming out. Um, I'm blessed and grateful, but, you know, there's always areas that I could improve on. You were letting your hands go quite a lot tonight, and the fella had some big shots. Tough bloke. He also grappled you quite a lot. Was that getting frustrating? Um, yeah, it was. It is one of the, you know, frustrating areas, but at the end of the day, it's now go back, evaluate what I could have done or what I should have done to not put myself in a position. But like I said, for keep when I, how I keep saying is just keep on improving and taking eliminating the marginal you know mistakes that I keep making. What were the things in the ring tonight that you felt like you could have done better? Uh, for starters, moving my feet. Um, all respect to Daryl, very strong and tough you know opponent. Um, but the areas that I could have you know eliminated and to, uh, put it to my advantage was moving my feet out when he came in. Um, but yeah. Do you think one of the advantages you've got is that you seem to have a very good boxing brain and that you're evaluating your performance whilst you're in there? Is that something you're aware of in yourself? Are you those, are you that sort of fighter that's constantly analysing what's going on whilst you're in there? Absolutely, and I feel like that's one of the traits that my coach has installed with me, Dan Willage. Um, he, he's very good at, you know, kind of tactics and, and, and looking at opponents and, and looking at areas that I should improve, where I shouldn't be making and stuff like that. And I'm learning, I'm still only 20 years old. So it's all about getting better, all about improving and, you know, the rise to the top. 4-0 and now. I think I'm right in saying that every fight's been on TV, which is a rare accomplishment yeah. at your age. Um, after your first fight last November, was it? Um, the Sun had you listed as one of the top young prospects to look out for. Yeah. Is that something that goes to your head or is your feet still firmly on the floor? Or are you just looking to get the rounds in? Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm not taking any of that in because I think like once you start overthinking stuff and, and thinking ahead, that's when things go wrong. So something that my parents have installed in me was to reach for the stars but keep my feet on the ground. And that's why I try to live by and as I keep getting better, as I keep improving, as I keep listening to my team, listening to my coaches, keep keeping my feet on the floor. Your um, good mate Sam Noakes was back here earlier. We did an interview with Sam and he predicted that you and your brother Rico would go all the way to the top. I'm not going to ask you about the top. Tonight's about prospects. It's about those short term goals, getting some exposure, getting some more experience. Over the next 12 to 18 months, what is it you want to achieve? Well, by the 12, 12 to 18 months, get as much experience as possible, whether it's different shows, whether it's bigger crowds, smaller crowds, whether it's tougher opponents, whether it's taller opponents, shorter opponents, all about gaining that experience so that when I get to that British, that European, that world level, I would have been there and done that in a sense and would, have, would be on a perfect uh, pedigree and be able to perform and showcase my skills. That's what it's all about. I think early in um, prospects' careers, you see the weight move around quite a bit, whereas you seem to be relatively steady. I think every time you're around that 176, 177 mark, yeah. are you comfortable already at your weight? Is that not even something you're in your head? Are you happy where you are? Yeah, like, like you said, some fighters do kind of, uh, and earlier in the careers, got a, car, got a little bit higher above their you know, championship weights, but something my coach Dan has always told me is, you know, keep fighting as close as possible on the championship weight, so for me it's 175 pounds and I feel like I've been close to that, or my last three fights have been on that weight, and so that when I get to that world level, that European level, when I'm fighting for world titles, I'm, I know I can make that weight comfortably, and I've showed that I, I have been making that weight comfortably. So even now at just, what, 20 years of age, yep. you're already looking down the line to world titles at a light heavyweight, that's your, that's your weight, that's where you are? That, that is the end goal, absolutely. So... Tonight on BT Sport Boxing YouTube, the first time we've done this, so potentially a much bigger audience, potentially the first time they've seen you fight. Yeah. If they wanted to follow your career, watch your next 5, 10, 15, 20 fights, what can they expect from Carol Atoma? What they can expect from me is each fight, them little marginal improvements, or oh, he's a bit faster, or oh, he's a little bit stronger, or oh, he's a little bit smart, or oh, he's fighting these shots better. Because by the time I get to that world level, by the time I get to that British level, by the time I get to them title levels, all them little things are going to add up and I'm going to be a complete mature Fire. Right, so well done, mate. I'm going to let you go shortly. But anything else you want to say, friends, family, any messages for anyone? Well, I just want to say thank you to everyone that came out, you know, on a, on a Friday night, came out and took the time out to come and support me. I re it really means a lot, and I truly appreciate it, and I'm blessed and grateful. Thank you very much. Well done, mate. Thank you, Darren.